thanks for uh, for inviting me. I will uh, talk a little about public engagement in RRI. My background is I've been working with public engagement in technology assessment since the 80s. Yes, I'm that old. And, um, and, uh, and now we're working a lot in different projects. Uh, Engage 2020 just finished, but Simulac, and we're also taking care of citizen consultation in the big hum human brain project, just to give you a little background. Well, I can just start and say that democracy is changing. Uh, there is uh, happening a lot of things in our societies. Uh, Brexit is an example of it. Uh, power structures and inequality influence the democratic game. Uh, people are demanding influence on things they did not demand influence on before. The, uh, the situation we're in is basically the people are beginning to revolt. We knew that, that in crisis of, uh, of trust in, in for many, many years around technology, we can see it distrib being distributed to other parts of society. Basically, um, people are getting less and less ideologic. They begin to be cross-ideologic. They leave the political parties. And sometimes that is misunderstood as they are becoming unpolitical. Don't do that. Don't understand it like that. They are not unpolitical. But they are... Um, they are not. Uh, they are being concrete. They are focusing on things that matters for their daily life and they want to have influence on that. That's not the same as they will get it through membership of the Liberal Party or the Labour Party. Maybe they like a little from the Labour Party and a little from the Liberal Party, but the fact is that they just want to see a future where their children and their grandchildren can live a good life, and they want to see developed in that direction. And uh, it doesn't really matter if it's the Liberal Party or the Labour Party that carries this, this away in, into the future. They just want to see it happen. So that's another situation for, for politics, because the usual parties have a bigger, uh, much more uh, problems of, of implementing their ideologies in ways that people like. Uh, so this is really interesting. Okay. Uh, deliberate democracy... <laughs> deliberate democracy is increasingly seen as one answer, maybe not the only answer, but the fact that we can sit together, talk, and decision makers, the people who have power in our societies, uh, can listen to citizens, not necessarily only through the elections or referenda, but also in between, and also in a much more close and, and, uh, and understanding uh, relation. Uh, and I think it's very important that engagement in responsible research and innovation is seen in this light. It's not only about implementing a little engagement here, a little engagement there, and then we have the windows looking fine. This is taking, about taking part in a, in a major change in our societies. And it will not stop. It can only get more of it in the future. Compliance is changing. Before this, uh, before we could, uh, legal compliance was enough. If you lived up to the environmental standards, then nothing, no one would come after you. Then something happened, and we began to put ethical compliance on top of that. But the problem was that it was implemented in a way so that only the elite got influence on it. And therefore, we begin to see a new concept coming up. Uh, industry has been aware of, that for, aware of that for a long time, but others seem to lag behind industry of social uh, compliance. So this goes much further. Social compliance is about preferred futures, and it's about being preemptive, avoiding the problems, or at least being ahead of the problems so that they do not get so, so, so bad. So basically, it's again about what I talked about. We want to see our children and grandchildren live up in a better life than we had. We want to uh, have, a, have a nice future. And uh, social compliance is very much about that. So it's not necessarily about if you live up to the rules now, it's about if you're going for the, in the right direction. Um, and who can define such directions? There are not many. Uh, uh, engagement in, in uh, CSR in the industry uh, has for some industry, not enough, but for some industry taken up this and begin to talk with their their consumers, with citizens, and so on, in order to actually be able to direct into the right future. Uh, and again, engagement in RRI should be seen in this larger picture. 
So is any of you were thinking that engagement in RRI is just a matter of uh, fashion, and it will stop in a few years, it's just an idea people have now, and so don't forget that, it's not. These are things that uh, have been developing over 10, 20, 30 years, and they have not just become stronger and stronger and stronger. There's no sign that they will not become stronger in the future. And if we don't manage them well, then they will end up in some sort of populistic problem. Uh, so basically, I think, that, but, but that might be my position, but I see engagement very much as the, you could say, the fundament for the other pillars in RRI. That might be a little idiosyncratic from my point of view, but I mean, inclusive, of course, but to be anticipatory needs that you get other perspectives things about the future, then you have your own, you yourself. You need to engage for that. To be reflexive, it's good to talk with others when you reflect. To be responsive, yes, think others into it. It's not only you who can act, and it's not only you who can find the right action to do. So I think, just to, to say that I th see engagement as something that goes through the whole idea of RRI, and not, it's not the only one little corner of it. Um, another thing is, uh, I see also engagement as something that uh, crosses over the whole production of, uh, of research and innovation, uh, and, and also implementation in our society. So basically, I see four different levels of complexity for, uh, for RRI. One is policy formation about technology and science. Uh, how do we implement GMO and which research we want in order to be implementing in the right way? Uh, program development, what are we going to spend the public's money on when we're making research programs? Uh, are we going to listen to the public so that we can get their future direction and wishes for the future into the research programs? Or are we going to listen to the experts so that they can get funding for the next project in the area where they already have worked for 30 years? I'm a little, uh, putting a little on that up in a nasty way, but basically these are important discussions. Who should define what we're going with, what we're going to, to research in, and which direction it goes? But it's also about project definition and project and, uh, and, and, and research institutional steering. Uh, who gets invited to the advisory boards? Uh, who are asked about uh, which direction we should go? Are we going to make action research where uh, those involved actually get an influence on the research you're doing? Uh, and finally, the actual research activity that overlaps with action research, but also citizen science, of course. And all these, they are important for very many different kinds of publics. So, and there are more than these, but to just give you an example. There are methods for all these squares. Uh, I'll give you another idea of uh, what engagement can be. If you see techno technological development as one straight line, it is not. It's ne nearly some kind of chaos that goes like this. But it, it starts with an idea, it ends with something implemented in our society. Over that line, we have to develop an innovation system. We have to find goals that this innovation system can go for, that society wants. We want to, want to make social technical strategies. For example, should we build up institutions around the technology? Maybe at some point the, pro the technology gives pro problems, so we make, have to make regulation. Think of the car here, social embedding. One thing is that we have uh, traffic laws, but another thing is uh, how you... Uh, how you drive a car and the culture you have about cars. A Dane should know about that when I go to Italy, for example. Uh, well, if I just step out onto the street in Italy, uh, the way I do in Denmark, I would be driven down. So it's very much about culture. Technology is very much about culture. And at the end, it might be so stiff, the whole technology, and we need to reinvent it. The point here is that the challenges along this chain are so different that we need different ways to deal with them as we go along. So there are different methods down here. Very simple point, but I hope you got it. Uh, so methods are different for engagement for very different reasons. Uh, which role do we give the participants? Which type of participants do we want? How do we select them? Are we going to make face-to-face, -face, online or blended? How transparent should the method be? And many other questions. Should, is it policy relevant or should it be involvement directly in research? Many questions. We had a project called Engage 2020 in which we looked into 
the criteria for selecting an engagement method. And we came up with uh, more than 90 different criteria for selecting an engagement method. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. Um, so basically what we did was we made a global scan of methods. Uh, we asked around everybody who had been into this. We have a huge network. They reported back, and we took an overview of the methods there are. We gathered them into what we called mother methods. And these me mother methods are something that are very different in, bet in between them. And under these mother methods, there are different variants of, of methods with cases. We gathered that, and we coded them for these more than 90 different criteria. And out of that came a system in which you can plug in your criteria, and it will weigh it and show the methods that are best for you. It looks like this. I will not go into this because I have too little time for it, but basically, you, you go to this uh, link, you will get this one. Each of these is one method. If you click it, you will get an overview of the method, uh, a description of the method. If you just put your mouth over, you get a very short description. And there are then a list of criteria. If you click one of those criteria, I have a pro policy formation problem then those methods that actually lift up to this criteria and can deliver for that will be, become bigger. So this is a way of getting into the very, very big array of methods in engagement. Um, so, my last slide. Uh, first of all, let me say that engagement, it's often said that engagement is, is not uh, mature, it's something we have to develop, we will have it if in the future. It's not true. The methods are there. They are there. And if you come into a situation where there's method, you say, oh, it's not, then we can build your method on top of the methods we have. So don't believe anyone saying that we need to have a lot of experimentation in methods because we really don't know what they're doing. And it's not true. We know. Uh, there's one exception, which is online and blended methods. I think blended, where we use a little online techniques and then face to face, we are getting good at that. Online is crap. There are no real good online methods yet. And uh, it, it's, they're good for something, like you can collect ideas, yes, you can take a little chat about something, but they are not at all up to the level of face-to-face -face met methods. And uh, therefore, that's something we should really invest in to see if we can get something there. There are very different amounts of experience on, diff on the different complexity levels. Uh, we have the, you know, the four levels I showed you, uh, policy program, science steering, and uh, direct uh, involvement. On the policy level, we have a lot of experience, back from the 80s in, in, um, in participatory technology assessment and also in foresight. There's a lot of examples there and very well-tested methods. Uh, program definitions, we are beginning to develop that. There's been the Voices project, and we have the Simulac project, Civisti project. S uh, Simulac project is running right now uh, in all, all 30 uh, countries in Europe, trying to make citizens make ideas for the next phase of Horizon 2020. And it's, it's, it's received very well by the Commission, so the citizens will get influence on the next call in uh, Horizon 2020. But, I mean, we can count the number of projects on one hand. So there's, a, there's really a need for testing this and implementing this uh, real life. Science management, yes, we have stakeholder boards now and then, a little advisory panel here and there, but really getting citizens into managing science, except for science shops, which are rather small projects going on in, in universities, if we talk about the big projects. Uh, the flagship projects, for example. There's no representation of the general public in the steering of these projects. So we have much, much too little uh, uh, engagement in, in this level, I think. And then we have the citizen engagement in science education. That could be action research and also, to some extent, citizen science. But I would warn a little against calling citizen science in its pure form. I know that you talked about it in a broader sense, Giuseppe. But in its pure form, we, 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 we use citizens to collect data. I'm not really sure that I would call that engagement. And the reason is that what I call engagement are situations where people have an opportunity to get influence. And which influence do you get by collecting data for a scientist? 
not really influence. So I think we should be very careful about calling the pure citizen science form for really call it engagement. It's something, it is engaging, yes, but it's not giving them influence. And this is what our de democracy and compliance problem is about. It's not about picking leaves and, uh, and lichens and uh, counting birds. It's about getting influence on your life. So I think we should be careful there. And I think it's very important that down here in this, uh, on, on direct work with the, with the scientists, between citizens and scientists, that we really begin to touch up things that hurts. Things that are important and things that people bring anxiety to the table. That's where this research begin, begins to be very interesting. So, there is a risk of making RRI unpolitical by focusing on the non-dangerous engagement practices, and I think citizen science in its pure form is an example of that. I'm not talking against citizen science, but if we focus on this collecting data thing too much, then we forget the whole thing that this was set up for. That's a risk. So then we will miss the democratic and the compliance aspects of of RRI, and that would be really sad. Thank you.